Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman S. Wright. I have a couple more pump topics I wanna to talk about, so let's talk about pump selection today. Let's get started. So let's say we have an application that needs 100 GPM and has a total dynamic head of 225 feet. Let's pull up a pump curve here. This pump curve shows a pump that will work. You can see where the system curve meets the pump curve. It's about 125 GPM and 235 feet ahead, so a little higher than our design point. If we follow the operating point down, it's about 75% efficient and the brake horsepower is about 10 horsepower and the NPSHR is around six feet. Or you can see in the corner it says 74%. 10.1 horsepower and 6.26 feet. But a single pump isn't the only pump that's, that can meet our design requirements. Let's pull up another pump curve. This pump also meets our requirements. In fact, the 7.1 inch impeller will give us our exact performance of 100 GPM and 225 feet ahead. The brake horsepower is about nine and the NPSHR is about 11 feet. It doesn't show the efficiency, but I know from the selection it was about 62%. Okay, so let's move this over and just put these in a table. First, we'll start with our design is 100 GPM and 225 feet ahead. And then we'll put the actual head, actual flow, efficiency percentage, brake horsepower, and NPSHR of the two pumps that we just looked at. So that's 235 feet, 126 GPM, 74% efficient. 10.10 brake horsepower and 6.26 feet of head. The second pump was 225, 162%, 9.2 and 11.27. Let's add a third and a fourth pump that we didn't see the curves on, but I'll put the performance here. So 227 feet ahead, 100 GPM, 51% efficient, 11.1 .1 horsepower, 6.6. .6. And then the fourth one would be 228 feet ahead, 103 GPM, 71%. 8.36 horsepower and 9.78 feet for NPSHR. So which pump should we select? Well, the answer is it depends. If meeting our exact design conditions is important, then we can eliminate the first pump option. If efficiency is a priority, then we would pick pump one. If it's lowest horsepower we want, then it would be pump four. And if NPSHR is most important, we could choose between one and three. Cost is also a factor. I don't have the cost here, but if the first cost is the most important factor, then that would drive your decision. Let's move this over and look at operating costs as well. So let's say all of these will run for eight hours a day, every day, so that's 3,000 operating hours a year. And let's say it's at a cost at 10 cents per kW. The pump efficiency number doesn't include the motor efficiency, so let's say they all have the same 90% efficient motor. The equation to calculate the electrical horsepower of a pump is GPM times TDH times the specific gravity, which we're just gonna use one for water, divided by 3960 times the pump efficiency times the motor efficiency. And then we'll multiply all of that by 0.746 to convert to kilowatt. Let me paste our pump table in here. So if my math is correct, it'll give us annual electrical costs of about 2513 for pump one, 2288 for pump two, 2762 for pump three, and 2080 for pump four. So now we can see that pump four has the lowest operating cost, and it still operates very close to our design points. Let's make a little room again. This is the curve for pump four. One thing we need to consider here is what happens if our system changes and we need to adjust the flow or the head that the pump produces. Let's say we need 250 feet ahead. How does that affect our performance? If you bring your operating point over here to 250 feet, then we follow that down and we'll see we're getting about 92 GPM. Our brake horsepower went to eight and our NPSHR is now about seven and a half feet. Is this acceptable? Well, it depends on your application, but it's something you need to consider when selecting a pump. So let's bring all of this back on screen now. That's the basics of selecting a pump. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.